There are people that have lived here for generations that love Alisa, that love the Salinas area and have tremendous gifts. You see this richness of cultures, these communities of color that served as a cheap labor force for the agricultural industry. For me, Salinas is a place of opportunity, of hopes and dreams. It's a place where you come, you know, and you know that the struggle is going to lead you to something great. There's a tremendous amount of wisdom here, energy, that sense of, uh, of perseverance, of, of, of just wanting to move ahead. It's a young community. It's where children live, work, and play. But that right now, even our kids are fighting and we're losing a lot of them. We have a youth violence epidemic here. This gang issue, this violence issue for Salinas, in many respects, has become the 500-pound uh, gorilla in the room. It has really become deeply ingrained in the community. I don't care whether you come from the east side, the, the north side, the south side, or the west side of Salinas. The gangs are the number one issue for everybody, the gangs and associated violence. Anytime you see inequity, you see these seeds that can uh, breed violence. There were a series of historical decisions that have created a legacy in our communities of disadvantage. Many of these systemic and environmental situations that these communities are plagued by generationally are man-made. It's a legacy of oppression that's passed on from generation to generation. Essentially there's this constant barrage of messages that tell people that they're not valuable. You just look around and you see abandoned lots, you see crime, you see police operating almost like an occupying army. For a lot of these young men, they don't get attention at home. A lot of these young men live with 15, 10 people in their home. There's a single parent in the house. There's no person they could look up to. So they often look up to a person on the streets. And that's the easy catch, right? The gangs will accept him, whatever he is, and they'll let him hang out, they'll give him a place to stay, they'll give him food, shelter, clothing, respect, they'll give him everything they're looking for that they can't find in their home. We can lock up your kids, you know, we can take them away, we can put them in another state, but when you come back home, you're faced with the same situation and if that hasn't changed, it's not gonna work. It's not about kids unable to make the right choice. They are making choices that are governed by their environments. And if we just focus on the young people and the families as if they're abnormal somehow, rather than recognize that they're essentially normal people living in an abnormal environment, then we do disservice to the people. I've committed a crime on behalf of my gang, and uh, I was arrested. I remember when I was incarcerated, I remember sitting up, looking up at the ceiling, thinking to myself, how did I get here? How did I end up here? And through probation, I had to do community hours with one of the local organizations, and they assigned me to Second Chance. Now it was interesting because now I'm working for the same organization that I went through as a young man. Second Chance used to focus their efforts around intervention, but they began to realize that the prevention is also very important and that um, the, the holistic approach to, to the you know, incidents of crime that we have can really make the changes. And part of that is acknowledging the pain, the scars, and the injury, and then being able to sort of use that to bring people into a position where they can help others. This journey that, that, that uh, we find ourselves in, uh, which we call La Cultura Cura, which translated means literally culture cures, but what it really means is transformational healing. The work that's being done in Salinas and elsewhere is to really recognize that trauma, that hurt, that is really at a community-wide level, and start to embrace it, start to enter into try to bring healing uh, into these communities. This is kind of symbolic for uh, 
what we attempt to do in communities, you know, we attempt to do with families. We just want to kind of light it. Just and look at it. Just took me a second, and now it's, it's on its own, right? Jerry's program, I think, is so beautiful because it encompasses the whole family. It gives them roots and a, a, a ground to build on. So now with probation, we try to wrap the families when, they, when the children come back home and to give them services. And I'm trying to give them Jerry's program now because it just makes so much sense and it's effective. What's happened in the last two generations where we have taught in society assimilate, acculturate, we have actually diminished the value of cultural values, cultural traditions, cultural identity. Absorbing energy and creating. We have all our teachings, we have our grandparents, we have everything that comes from our culture, from our roots, we have it here and we have to embrace it because Somewhere down the line, it got lost, or is this something that the youth are not proud of anymore? We have broken that spirit. Well, what we're trying to do is recreate it. We need to create alternative places, and, and not just with youth. We need elders there. We need older men there that can engage with them and, and teach them. So why do we have open spaces right here? Because if someone new comes. Okay, exactly. So there's always a space for somebody, right? Great. People just want a sense of belonging, but also a sense of purpose in life. So when you don't get those first teachings, you're messed up. The main thing is we want them to understand to be a joven con palabra. To have your word is a huge, huge thing. It's not something that people are just giving. It's something that you have to earn. Nowadays, you have to sign legal documents for everything. But before then, if you gave somebody your word, that was good enough. Remember we talked about the key? What did I talk about the key? So going through those steps of, you know, always keeping your word. Don't do anything to hurt yourself or others. Well, the gourd, you know, this is what makes the noise. And so when we pass palabra is our moment to shine, correct? So Take responsibility for your actions and be a positive role model to others. They seem simple enough, but it's not, you know, especially if you're not used to doing these things. I remember Jerry talking about this stuff. Like you cannot go and do this stuff unless you go through it yourself. Because if we're wounded, if we're, we're, we're hurting inside, how are we going to be able to heal somebody else? I, you know, I don't think straight. I'm all over the place. And, you know, I got in a car wreck. I messed up a lot growing up, you know. And I went in the wrong path, you know. And, and I made a kind of 180 at some point when I started helping people. So there's something that happens when you help people you also receive. This is a representation of our union, of us coming together and being one. Because no matter what, I see the, the, what I went through growing up as a blessing in disguise because it, it uh, made me the person who I am today and it allows me to share my story to the young girls so that they don't experience you know, the, the struggles of violence, the struggles of you know, being a teen mother, you know, and, and, and actually you know, being able to connect with these young women. So it starts with your mind, body, soul, your whole spirit, your family. And from then, it promulgates to other avenues. Sometimes, you know, throughout life, people have told us that we're dumb. People have told us that you mean nothing. People told us that you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too ugly, you're too this, too, too that. And so we begin to believe those things that other people say about us. Quiero que mi hijo sea mejor que yo y que tenga lo que yo no tuve. Entonces, yo eso lo aprendí en cara corazón. Me dieron muchos consejos, me escucharon, lloré, sonreí, platiqué y me gusta mucho este, lo que pasa que We talk about our regalos and we talk about our baggage of the day or the week. Something that's been weighing us down or a gift. I was in the whole drug scene for a long time. It just took a lot of years to do a lot of, I think, work or healing. And now I think that all these years have paid off because now I could do that. Just working on myself and working with my kids. And then teach my kids, it's okay to hug me, it's okay to give me a kiss, it's okay to share your feelings, it's okay to cry. Growing up, it was the opposite. If you were crying, my dad would get mad and say, only girls cry. 
or he'll put my dresses on my brother saying you're a girl now you know so I was like I'm gonna break that cycle and I did my mom always told me that she'll be going to classes but I don't know I wouldn't ask because I wasn't really interested after I decided to go and then there's a lot of stuff you could you could learn I would often um, talk back to my mom in, in some cases but now I just, I just learned to talk it through with her in a respectful way, because I respect for women. So that way it changed me. And I just think building up their self-confidence, self um, having more self-esteem, and also at the same time, when they're ready to have a family, they're gonna raise healthy kids. They're gonna raise healthy youth. The transformation I went through is, I could only use the words of my wife. Uh, where was this 10 years ago? Our whole goal is recreating that extended kinship network that is built on that sense of every person is a blessing, that everyone has a sacred purpose, that there are values and traditions, and that next generation that then comes up will be the ones that guide and lead all of this. This is not a community that's sick in need of help. This is a community with opportunity, bringing with hope, who's organizing and mobilizing for change. And that's just that.